JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 7th. I am Harald Lambos Pissoros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It gained, it gained against JPY, GBP, CHF, the Canadian dollar and SEC in that order while it underperformed versus NOC, NZD, AUD and the Euro. The weakening of the safe havens yen and franc combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked Kiwi and Aussie suggests that uh, markets traded in a risk-on fashion yesterday. Indeed, uh, major EU and US indices closed in uh, positive waters with the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 hitting fresh record. The exception was, uh, was Nasdaq, which uh, slid 0.61% as increased risk of antitrust uh, scrutiny of big tech pressured shares of companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet and uh, Facebook. The positive, uh, the optimism uh, rolled over into the Asian session today with Japan's Nikkei 225, uh, China Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI uh, rising 1.60, 0.71 and 2.14% respectively. Here the exception was uh, Hong Kong's Hang Seng which slid 0.16%. Uh, now the the drivers behind, uh, behind the approved market sentiment may have been the approval of Moderna's vaccine by the European Medicines Authority and the European Commission, as well as the victories in the Georgia runoff elections uh, in the US by, by Democrats, which handed them a narrow control of, uh, of the Senate. As we already expected, a democratic sweep may have raised speculation that President-elect Biden's fiscal agenda will pass much more easily which could mean more fiscal stimulus and infrastructure spending. And democratic controlled Congress could also mean higher taxes and more regulation, which is negative for stocks. But we still believe that due to the coronavirus vaccinations, the fiscal support in the US, the monetary policy easing around the globe, and the Brexit trade accord, the path of least, of least resistance for equities and other risk-linked assets may be to the upside. Yesterday, we also got the minutes from the latest FOMC gathering at which officials kept policy unchanged, but changed their forward guidance, saying that they will continue to buy bonds until substantial further progress has been made towards the committee's maximum employment and price stability goals. The minutes revealed that uh, some participants noted that they could consider further adjustments to their purchases, such as increasing the pace of purchased uh, securities, or waiting, or waiting, uh, or weighing them towards uh, longer maturities. That said, other members said that once progress towards their goals had been made, had been attained, a gradual tapering could uh, begin. In our view, whether the chances of more stimulus will increase or not will depend on the U.S. employment report due to be released tomorrow. Yesterday, the ADP report revealed a 123,000 uh, job loss, which shifts uh, the risks of the NFP forecast, which is at 71,000, to the downside. Now, as for, uh, today's, as for today's events, during the European uh, morning, we get Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for December. The headline rate is expected to have ticked up, but to have stayed within the negative territory. Specifically, it is expected to have risen to minus 0.2% year over year from minus 0.3%. The HICP excluding energy and food is expected to have slowed to 0.3% year over year from 0.4%. 
At the last meeting of 2020, the ECB uh, decided to expand its uh, pandemic emergency purchase program by 500 uh, billion euros and extended uh, the scheme by nine months to March 2022. That said, the euro gained on uh, the decision as due to the currency's prior appreciation, many may have expected the bank to deliver more. Currently, the euro dollar exchange rate is trading at a higher level than uh, back then, which is a negative for, co for consumer prices. After all, President Lagarde said at the press conference following the last decision that the appreciation of the euro exercises downward pressure on uh, prices and that uh, officials will uh, monitor it uh, very carefully. Thus, another round of negative headline and very low core inflation prints may raise speculation that the ECB may decide to act again in the first months of the new year. The block's retail sales for November and the UK's construction PMI for December are also coming out. Euro area's uh, retail sales are anticipated to have fallen 3.6% month over month after rising 1.5%, while the UK construction PMI is forecast to have inched up to 55 from 54.7. Later in the day, from the US, we have the ASM non-manufacturing PMI for December, the trade balance for November, and the initial jobless claims for last week. The ISM print is expected to have declined to 54.6 from 55.9, while the trade deficit is forecast to have widened to 64.5 billion US dollars from 63.10 uh, billion. And the initial jobless claims are forecast to have risen to 800,000 from 787,000 the week before. We get trade data for November from Canada as well, with the nation's uh, deficit expected to have narrowed somewhat to 3.3 billion Canadian dollars from 3.76 uh, Canadian dollars. We also have three speakers on today's agenda, and those are Philadelphia Fed uh, President Patrick Harker. St. Louis Fed President James Bullard and Chicago Fed President Charles Evers. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.